Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my web page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Rajmundry, Andhra Pradesh, India. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. I am the medical author of the book Focused Neurology and Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic the lower motor neuron weakness. The lower motor neuron weakness concepts of motor system part 9. But what exactly are lower motor neurons? Lower motor neurons they consist of alpha and gamma types. So they consist of alpha and gamma types. The large alpha motor neurons are more numerous and innervate the extra fusel muscle fibers of the motor unit. So the large alpha motor neurons are more numerous and innervate the extra fusel muscle fibers of the motor unit. Loss of alpha motor neurons or disruption of their axons produce lower motor neuron weakness. So loss of alpha motor neurons or disruption of their axons produce lower motor neuron weakness. So, this is the figure depicting the lower motor neuron. As you can see in the figure, the muscle spindles are present in the intrafusal fibers and motor end plates are present in the voluntary muscles, the extrafusal fibers. So, we have the afferent neuron going on from the muscle to the, to the dorsal root ganglia entering the grey matter of the spinal cord and going to the anterior horn cell. Anterior horn cell as we have just discussed it contains both alpha motor neurons and gamma motor neurons. Alpha motor neurons come and innervate the motor end plates on the voluntary muscles the extra fusel fibers whereas the gamma motor neurons come and innervate the muscle spindles the intra fusel fibers. So this diagram is very very important to understand the lower motor neuron. So we have afferent neuron carrying the sensory information. We have efferent neurons, the alpha motor neurons and gamma motor neurons. Alpha motor neurons are primarily responsible for the power and the gamma motor neurons are primarily responsible for the maintenance of the tone. So the smaller less numerous gamma motor neurons innervate the intrafusal muscle fibers of the muscle spindle and contribute to the normal tone and stretch reflexes. The alpha motor neurons receive direct excitatory input for the, from the corticomotor neurons and the primary muscle spindle afferents. The alpha motor neurons and the gamma motor neurons also receive excitatory input from the descending upper motor neuron pathways, the sense, the segmental sensory inputs and the interneurons. The alpha motor neurons receive direct inhibition from the Renshaw cell interneurons and other interneurons indirectly inhibit the alpha and motor neurons. So now let's talk about the famous muscle stretch reflex otherwise known as the tendon reflex. So what are the afferents, what are the efferents and how does this reflex happen and manifest? So a tap on a tendon stretches the muscle spindles which are tonically activated by gamma motor neurons and activates the primary spindle afferent neurons. So example knee jerk. When we take a knee hammer and tap on the tendon of the muscle it stretches the muscle spindles which are tonically activated by gamma motor neurons and activate the primary spindle afferent neurons. These neurons stimulate the alpha motor neurons in the spinal cord producing a brief muscle contraction which is the familiar tendon reflex which we are all aware of. So now let's see what this lower motor neuron weakness is about. This pattern results from disorders of lower motor neurons either in the brainstem motor nuclei and the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord or from dysfunction of the axons of these neurons as they pass to the skeletal muscle. So it could be anywhere from the 
lower motor neurons in the brainstem motor nuclei or the anterior cells of the spinal cord or the dysfunction of the axons of these neurons as they pass to the skeletal muscle. Weakness is due to a decrease in the number of muscle fibers that can be activated through a loss of alpha motor neurons or disruption of their connections to the muscles. Loss on the other hand, loss of gamma motor neuron does not cause weakness. Loss of gamma motor neurons does not cause weakness but decreases muscle tone and attenuates stretch reflexes. An absent stretch reflex suggests involvement of the spindle afferent fibers. When a motor unit becomes diseased, especially in the anterior horn cell disease, it may discharge spontaneously producing fasciculations. The mechanism of fasciculation is because of Kenon's law of denervation supersensitivity. When the anterior horn cells are partially denervated, they become supersensitive to its chemical neurotransmitter that is the acetylcholine and therefore even when there is no direct contact, it responds and there is muscle twitches occurring involuntarily which is known as fasciculations. So this is explained by the law of Kenon's law of denervation supersensitivity. So when a motor unit, unit becomes diseased, especially in the anterior horn cell disease, it may discharge spontaneously producing fasciculations which are visible muscle twitches. But sometimes when the alpha motor neurons or their axons degenerated, the denervated muscle fibers may also discharge spontaneously. These single muscle fiber discharges or fibrillations cannot be appreciated directly by our naked eye. They can be seen, they cannot be seen but they can be recorded with the EMG. They cannot be seen with the naked eye but they can be recorded with the EMG. So fasciculations are muscle twitches which can be seen by naked eye whereas fibrillations cannot be seen but they can be picked up by EMG. Now what happens if there is a neuromuscular junction disorder, the neuromuscular junction weakness example myasthenia gravis, sustained or repeated contractions of the affected muscles decline in strength despite continuing effort called fatigability example myasthenia gravis. For example when they are asked to chew the uh, hard meat initially they will be able to chew well but with the progress or with the passage of the time they are not able to chew the hard meat and they just cannot uh, chew it. It, it, they just keep the mouth quiet because of extreme weakness. So this is known as fatigable, fatigability of the muscles and this is the classic example. So sustained or repeated contractions of the affected muscles decline in strength despite continuing effect called fatigability, example myasthenia gravis. Thus fatigable weakness is suggestive of disorders of the neuromuscular junction which causes functional loss of muscle failure, muscle fibers due to failure of their act activation. So the fatigable weakness is suggestive of disorders of the neuromuscular junction which causes functional loss of muscle fibers due to failure of their activation that is the postsynaptic disorders. So we have seen now the anterior horn cell involvement, we have seen the uh, neuromuscular junction involvement. Now let us see what happens in muscle weakness, the myopathic weakness. Myopathic weakness is produced by a decrease in the number of contractile force of muscle fibers activated within motor units with muscular dystrophies, inflammatory myopathies or myopathies with muscle fiber necrosis, the number of muscle fibers is reduced within many motor units. Psychogenic weakness, sometimes people may feign weakness, functional weakness, it is not true organic weakness, it is functional weakness, that is psychogenic weakness. Weakness may occur without a rec recognizable organic basis. So how do we recognize? It tends to be variable, inconsistent and with a pattern of distribution that cannot be explained on a neuroanatomical basis. Psychogenic weakness can also be evaluated, assessed by a sign known as Hoover's sign. So the normal pattern is that when we try to lift, for example, imagine these two are my legs when and my left leg is affected, when the left leg is 
when we ask the patient to lift the left leg which is weak if he is not able to lift the left leg upwards the normal tendency is put the extra pressure on the normal leg that is the right leg downwards this is a normal reflex mechanism when we are not able to lift one leg upwards we put extra pressure on the other leg downwards so as to lift the weak leg upwards so in a persons who are truly hemiplegic imagine a person has got left hemiplegia left foot is affected so the examiner places one hand above the left leg the other hand below the right leg so the examiner asks the patient to lift the left leg upwards which is supposed to be weak and if it is really weak when he tries to lift he is not able to see lift so he tries to lift the left leg upwards so he is not able to put so he puts extra pressure on the normal right leg downwards so the examiner will be able to feel the strength of the normal leg downwards on the other side if he is truly hemiplegic if a person is acting psychogenic weakness he neither puts any effort to lift the supposed to be paralyzed left leg upwards nor he puts any pressure on the supposed to be normal leg downwards so the examiner will not feel the extra power on the supposed to be normal leg downwards so this is who was saying very very interesting sign which is used to differentiate psychogenic weakness from true weakness yeah i hope you have enjoyed listening to these wonderful concepts of lower motor neuron lesions the other important concepts of clinical neurology example history taking general examination neurological examination hemiplegia paraplegia all these clinical exam oriented topics i put it in a book called exam oriented neurology if interested this book could be purchased this is basically a clinical neurology book but the other important concepts of neurology i put it together in a question answer format in a book called focused neurology uh, the author being myself dr s srinivas this book is available online from all leading booksellers including amazon so if interested this book could be bought online i hope you have enjoyed listening to these wonderful concepts of low motor neuron lesions uh, the anterior horn cell weakness the neuromuscular junction weakness the muscle myopathy the muscle weakness and finally the psychogenic weakness uh, which we can differentiate from true weakness by a sign known as hoover sign if you really enjoyed listening to these wonderful concepts please like it share the link but please subscribe my youtube channel dr sinwas medical concepts and my fb page dr sinwas concepts thank you bye